The American Broadcasting Company presents Pat Novak for Hire. Sure, I'm Pat Novak for Hire. Down around the Embarcadero, everybody's clawing his neighbor for a quick buck, and everybody knows it. So if you call your work something else, who are you fooling? I rent boats when that pays off, and in between, I do what I can to keep something on my hip besides a handkerchief. If you'd been along with me a few days ago, you'd have known that I was ready for work. A friend of mine called Ira had an inside tip on a hot horse in the third race at Bay Meadows. I'd gone down there to see if I could promote the news into currency. It was a good idea, except that my horse was still running in the third when they started the fourth. All I had left of my bankroll was an empty feeling. After checking through my pockets, I went out on a highway and started back to town. I was still unlimbering my thumb when a long, low roadster pulled up beside me. It was a very expensive job, including the driver. She was just about old enough to vote, and if she did and the candidates weren't blind, they'd have spent all their time on her corner. Is that on my way, mister? I'd sure like to be. How do you know which way I'm going? The scenery's good wherever it's located. (laughs) The shy type. Uh, You want me to stammer? No, but you could wait until we're introduced. Will Novak clear the air any? My name's Lydia Reynolds. Novak. Haven't I heard about you somewhere? If you have, you ought to change your friends. Oh, you're sort of a lone wolf detective or something. Uh, You got three votes there. One of them ought to win. Well, if you're any of those, maybe I could use you. You look like you could afford it. Oh, that's no problem. If money's no problem, you aren't really worrying. What do you call fear? Narrow it down. I can't. Just, well, have you ever felt as if something were hovering over you and yet you didn't know what it was? Could be a blackjack or a second zombie. Will you help me? All I can do for nightmares, lady, is keep you up late. It's more real than that, believe me. So's the money hiring me will cost you. You'll do it, then. You could be a sort of... of a bodyguard. Do I get to fill in the pauses? Well... At least I won't have to worry about you keeping your mind on your work. Wait here. I have to make a phone call. She walked away, and it was smooth and easy to watch, like a bird gliding on a bit of wind. When she got out of sight, I began to think about the hire. I'd heard of rich dames doing crazy things, but this was crowding the record. Nobody hires a watchman to stand off a bad dream. I felt like a guy getting ready to fly with a pair of homemade wings. It could be thrilling. Then what else? But what else began to develop right away? A car pulled up near me with two men in it. One of them got out. A big guy with a kind of a face you see in ads for men's swimming trunks, handsome and a little vacant. He came over to the car. He wanted to talk. Got a match, buddy? Yeah. Here. Thanks, buddy. It's a nice car you got there. Mm Mm-hmm. Must have set you back three or four grand. It's only money. Yeah. What'd you say your name was? If you're selling anything, I don't want it. Give me back my matches. I didn't catch the name, buddy. The wind's against you. Try shutting your mouth. You have to be nasty. You got the ways that make it come easy. You know, I could teach you manners if I had time. You ain't built to teach me anything I don't want to learn. No, well, I can try. Starting with, what's this in my hand? So you're loaded. So let's drive down the road and see what else I can learn you. Like remembering your name, for instance. Head right into the city. You do know where the city is, don't you? Look, sucker, if you're out to roll me, you grab the wrong goose. Don't tell me you're broke. Try the second $5 window down at Bay Meadows. You're broke and three grand worth of auto? <laughs> that makes about as much sense as stuttering Dan O'Brien. So you bet on a three-legged horse. Let's break it up and forget it. We're coming into town now. I might as well ride it out. Besides, this ain't my crate. 
I thumbed a ride from a dame I was waiting for when you started waving around the artillery. You're telling me her name's Lydia Reynolds. Look, drive up that alley before you get lost. Are you knuckle-headed to dead end straight? That's all right. From here on, you're riding on a clock. When I came to, it was raining. Not much. Just a faint drizzle. It felt nice on the back of my neck and my hair. As things came back into focus, I found out I was still behind the wheel. I was leaning like a flower a week after the wedding. My head felt big enough for a size 30 hat. I could count every pulse beat in aches. Didn't get any better when someone started shaking me. A big, rough hand. It had been a gold mine for a rug cleaning outfit. I turned my head enough to see a flock of vest buttons bulging over a belt. Come on, Novak. The show's a turkey. Uh, go away, Holman. This ain't an apple car. Eric's no good, Novak. You'll never make Broadway. Stop shaking me. What do you think I am, a whiskey sour? Don't worry. You haven't begun to shake. Whittle the judge starts to read the papers at you. But you think I stole the car? There's that and So the... they caught up with you. They took you off homicide and put you on a hot car detail. I can see now where insurance rates are going to zoom out of sight. I caught you and the motor's still warm. You couldn't catch a fever in a flu epidemic. And while the body's still warm. You couldn't find your way up an escalator. What'd you say? The body. In the back of the car. And you hammed that act almost as much as you did that fake blackout. She called it a nightmare. The body wasn't much to see. Just a standard model citizen with a little too much weight and a little too little hair on his head. If he'd been anything special when he was breathing, it had all gone away like a shout in a high wind. Hellman went through the suit, but all that turned up was a hole in the pocket and some chicken feed chains. I needed to find out what was going on, and I needed to find it fast. I figured a good place to start was to look up Lydia Reynolds. I'd taken her address off the car. It was a nice place, a cozy 16 or so room done in neat white marble. Set back from the rabble in St. Francis Woods behind enough lawn to outfit a golf course. A butler answered my ring, an easy six feet of well-collected muscle. He led me along a flock of Persian rugs. I ended up in a living room a little smaller than the, the Young Museum. Lydia was over by a window. She wasn't glad to see me. She wasn't mad either. Just polite. Did you have a pleasant drive? I'll settle for exciting. Do you always steal cars like that, or is it something you just developed? What am I supposed to do with that? Is the question strange? You knew my neurotic friends. You know I have to ask things like that. Yeah, I met one of them. I phoned the police about the car. But I'm glad you changed your mind. Uh, everybody helped, including a friend of yours who held me up, made me drive away, and then slugged me. A friend of mine? He knew you, a tall, handsome citizen with a loud voice and nasty manners. You're describing most of my friends. That doesn't help at all. This one likes jokes. He planted a corpse in the back of the car. You're joking, aren't you? I mean, this really didn't happen. No, all you got to do is explain away my headache. It means those fears I had weren't just my imagination. Then what do you got? That's a good question, my dear. Maybe you ought to think about it. We were talking. Alone. You're forgetting your manners. Am I? Introduce us, Lydia. Mr. Novak, my uncle, Charles Reynolds. And then you'd better go up and rest, don't you think? I want to talk to Mr. Novak. Tomorrow would be better. I'm sure Mr. Novak will excuse you. I'll sit anywhere. It's not my ball game. Charles. Someday, Charles. Excuse me, Patsy. A drink, Mr. Novak? Make it straight for a change. Perhaps I should tell you that I'm Lydia's legal guardian as well as her uncle. The day's full of news. Those fears of hers are really nothing. Just her imagination. She's a very nervous, high-strung girl. Did you notice? I didn't notice you tried to climb up the walls. Of course, it's not that bad. But I'll admit her imagination gives me trouble now and then. The job's tough, but the pay's good. Hmm? I'll look after my niece. I uh, hope it hasn't inconvenienced you any. Not so far. She hired me. I'll stick around till she fires me. I'm afraid that's impossible. They used to say that about flying. I told you my niece is highly neurotic. She's not responsible for her acts. I'm willing to pay whatever you think so is necessary. So she, so far. I'll leave it that way till she hangs up the phone. You're wrong about that. My niece is not coming down again tonight. You might as well go. Mind if I check that with her? Yes, I do. Are you leaving, or will I have the butler show you out? Never mind the muscles. I'll play your cards, this time at least. This time is the last time. That part is still with her. I tell you, I run this establishment. Yeah? 
I'm beginning to wonder how. The big butler showed me out. A nice guy to have around if you go for screams in the night. It was quiet and roomy outside. A big, peaceful sky with a moon like a washtub. A little piece of wind playing with the trees on the grounds. Like some old ghosts whispering together. I heard Lydia call the first time she tried. It wasn't much above a breath. She was upstairs at a window. She told me to go to the guest house set on the back of the lot, hidden away in a clump of trees. It turned out to be a little toy cottage like something out of a fairy tale. Lydia showed up while I was still fumbling with the door. I'm so glad you didn't go away. What'd my uncle tell you? Did he send you away? He didn't have to push hard. I was ready to throw in my hand anyway. But I need you. Don't you see I need you now more than ever? I didn't contract to play ducks and drakes with a dead body, a muscle-bound butler, and an uncle who goes around saying goodbye. But that's one of the reasons I need you. My father left me a huge fortune. My uncle's been trying for years to get his hands on it. It gets even better. Next, we'll be having poison in the highballs. How do I know how far he'll go? Already, he's tried to put me in an asylum. Yeah. He was giving me that nervous talk about you. You'll stay? It's a job for the judge, baby. All right. It's for the judge. And just stay and talk to me. I don't know about that either. Does it sound hard? The last time we talked, someone else finished the sentences with a blackjack. I can make better memories than that. Well, while we're in the files, how come the guy who slugged me knew so much about you? Oh, his name's Post. They call him Two Spot. Do you have to talk about him? I like lights when I'm ice skating. Had it wait till morning? Don't answer. Maybe they'll go away. Time to retire, Miss Lydia. What do you mean, coming here? I'm worried about your resting, Miss. The doctor. Get out of here! You hear? Leave me alone! Very well, Miss, but the gentleman is leaving, and I thought maybe you'd like me to see you back to the house. He isn't leaving you! You're fired! The gentleman's leaving, Miss. And now I'm on Get your out. payroll. The joint's full of guys giving Get orders. Out. You want to walk out or stumble? I don't want you here. Make up my mind for me. Get out! I was doing all right while I stayed away from him. When he got in close, the show ended and the band went home. When I came to, the bump on my head was matching aches with my jaw. He won that one the hard way, Novak. Uh, are you the prize? What are you talking about? That dead body over there. You must be out for the limit tonight. Uh, help me up. He's the butler. What happened to him? He backed into a knife. It's illegal, you know. Well, the town's full of knives. Anybody could have given it to him. I don't see any crowd around. But you're here, ain't you? Where's the dame? Why did you kill him, Novak? Yeah, yeah, of course. But where's the dame? There's something going on around here that I'm not in on. You seem to know all the turns. Open up, and I'm not fooling. You got the story straight, Hellman. After I left you, I came out here to see the dame Lydia Reynolds. We were in here, and the play was beginning to warm up when the butler knocked and tried to throw me out. I took a swing, and he swung harder. You woke me up. The girl must have done it. Who? Lydia Reynolds? What do you think I'm talking about? Hedy Lamar? You might as well be, Bob. This way, it's your word against eight million bucks. <laughs> It got even worse when we went after Lydia. Her uncle blocked us away from the door with a doctor looking over his shoulder. He said he followed the butler out to the guest house and caught Lydia as she ran out. He'd seen us fighting and started in to stop us when Lydia fainted. Then Hellman showed up with a stolen car. And Reynolds talked in a very positive voice, eight million bucks worth. It takes more than an inspector's badge to interrupt that kind of talk. Hellman took it all down in a little book. Then he took me into the Kearney Street Station and booked me on suspicion of two murders and a car heist. He was happy and helpful. He even sent out and got Jocko Madigan to come to see me. Now, Jocko was an ex-medico and a boozer, but he was the best friend I had in town. 
If sympathy was a crowbar, I'd have been out of the place in ten minutes. Patsy, my boy, I've never seen you look more at home. Uh, go away, Jocko, you bother me. Endurance vile, there must you wake and weep and all your frowsy couch in sorrow steep, uh, to paraphrase Bobby Burns. Uh, go away, my headaches. I've come to offer my aid. Anything I can do for you, Patsy, say it and it's done. Uh, you can't help me, Jocko. Oh, don't tell me you really did it this time. No. Then why are you worrying? Have you no faith in justice? You can put together a deaf judge and a bought jury, you can... Well, as bad as that. Oh, go away, Jocko. Weep in your beer for me. Oh, this isn't like you, Patsy Novak. I've called you everything in the way of being a disgraceful citizen, but I've always admired one thing about you. You were a fighter. You never quit fighting. How do you fight eight million bucks in a perfect frame-up? Eight million bucks? Oh, there isn't that much money. I'll try and sell that to Lydia Reynolds. Oh, is she the one who built the frame? Oh, it's even better than that. I don't know who did it or why. Hey, don't be mysterious, Patsy. I'm too old to play word games. Look, Jocko, I was coming to ride in from Bay Meadows. Lydia picked me up. Then I was hijacked by a guy Lydia said could be two-spot post. Slugged and left with a dead body in Lydia's car. When I went up to see her about it, the butler cooled me. When I came to, he's dead. The girl must have a hard time keeping friends. She wanted to hire me for a bodyguard. She said she was being threatened, but she couldn't put her finger on it. That shouldn't be so hard. She starts out with eight million dollars worth of bait, so anybody might try for that. Kind of veil. Who's this two-spot character? Anybody I know? He's nobody we can use. I think Lydia dreamed him up. Well, he might be worth looking up. You're wasting your valuable drinking time, Jocko. You can't put your finger on a ghost. Oh, you haven't had my experience with the little men, Patsy. So long, lover. <laughs> I sat there after Jocko left and tried to put together something I could use to tell my lawyer. I was still thinking it over when the guard came along and opened up my cage. When I got out to the desk, the sergeant told me Lydia had sprung me. She phoned in and said I couldn't have done it. She also fixed bail. I walked out of the place and started down toward Pier 19, but I didn't get far. A car pulled up. It was two spot and he still had his gun. I was tired of arguing, so I got in. How do you like Los Angeles? Well, I liked it. I'd live there. It'll grow on you. What's the caper post? You got a dream? Spread it out. I got better than a dream, Novak. I got the best racket since Robin Hood. Including dead bodies? They make you nervous? My racket's better than that. I don't need you lousing up the act. Now who's nervous? I won't be long. I'm going to put you on a train for Los Angeles and give you a thousand bucks. Stay down there till you spend it. You're full of dreams. And don't spend it too fast, Novak. If you come scampering back here before the month's out, you're liable to wind up looking at the inside of a luggage compartment. Like the private dick did. Oh, you know the guy, huh? Here's the station. If you have any more questions, ask information. Remember, Novak, if you're tired of breed and just show your face around town again before New Year's. If I do, you'll be the first to know it. He followed me into the station and on the train. He stayed right by me until the thing started to pull out. Yeah, it was wonderful. I had a thousand dollars, the name of the guy behind the killings, and a free ride to Palo Alto. When I got off the train down there, I phoned Hellman. He was as helpful as a fireman in a sorority house. You're in Palo Alto? Good. Stay there. Before you go out and arrest some more wrong suspects, maybe you'd like to know who did it. You're full of news, Novak. I guess you think you've found him. Am I calling for help? You wouldn't know it if you needed help. The guy behind the Did you figure that spot post. Did you figure that out all by yourself? Lydia said it might fit him, but I needed proof. I got it. You haven't got the right time. Yeah? What's wrong with two spot having something on Lydia? Something that would quiet her if he tried to kidnap Grab. Are you trying to tell me how two spot works? We've known the guy for years. He runs a bowling alley and makes a little horse book on the side. Kidnapping isn't his style. Did you ever hear of styles changing? He has a fifty thousand dollar bowling alley, the two spot in O'Farrell Street. He's not going to risk that. Hey, you're going to sit around on your fat hips and let Lydia be snatched while you check on the tax rate of a bowling alley. I know who did it, right, boy. I just told you. Not unless he's put on a lot of weight. Who is it? You know everything, Novak. I wouldn't think of trying to steal you. Did you know that the body in the car was a private detective? Yeah, so was the butler. Don't worry so much about things. Who was it, Halman? And have you lost up the act? We got the guy covered like a blanket. The next false move he makes will be on his last. 
And two spots on the town. I hear Palo Alto's a nice place. Now, you just stay down there and look it over. I'm going to look just far enough to find a car. Listen, Novak. I don't want you to come around putting your big feet in the trap. Now, stay out of this. I'm warning you. You ought to get a refit on your plate, Hellman. That sounded like you said you were warning me. I took a taxi back to San Francisco. Well, the price is easy if you have $1,000. We drove up to St. Francis Woods. Just as we were approaching the Reynolds place, I saw Lydia walking along the sidewalk. She was wrapped up in one of those long capes with a hood. She was walking in a hurry. When I caught up with her, she seemed glad, but she didn't slow down. Come on, Patsy. Walk with me. You run it after something or something after you. Something's after me, Patsy. I'm frightened. You're full of half talk. Don't you ever open up? I saw a man. At least a shadow of a man. Hiding near a corner of the guest house. Some more of those fears? This man was real, Patsy. He was waiting for me out there. I said they're closing in, and they are. You don't want my help. But I do. I need help desperately. Why don't you give me something to work with? All I get out of you is talk about goose pimples. Oh, I'm tired, Patsy. Awfully tired. What you need is a drink. Come on downtown with me. I'll look up a friend of mine named Jocko Madigan. Can't we go to a bar? You don't know Jocko. We flagged a taxi and beat around town for a while. I finally located Jocko in a Market Street trap up near the Civic Center. The place ran all the way through to the next street. I didn't pay much attention with Lydia headed for the back of the place. The joint had the kind of lights that made a girl want to fix her makeup. I was looking around for Jocko, and it was only by accident that I noticed Lydia walk right past the powder room and out the rear door. I started after her, and I wondered why I should. I figured if that was some more of her half-talk, she could have it all herself. I'd had enough for one day. I turned back to Jocko. In walked a dead duck. I'm out of jail, so you're crying. You're out a girl, too. I saw you watching her leave. Yeah, she's a restless type. She dropped you like a leap. Smart girl. Her name's Lydia, the one I told you about. She sprung me out of jail. Oh, I, I take back the part about her being smart. I had two-spot post bill for the part. Hellman says I'm crazy. Well, he could be right, you know. Why did you pull down your bets on post? All I had to go on was the fact that he was anxious to keep me out of town for two weeks. That could mean something was on the fire. I forget he was doing the cooking. You know, Patsy, I'd like to talk to that Lydia person. There's something fishy in her past. I'd like to know what it is. With eight million bucks, she could afford to be careless. Oh, this is something special. Two spot ties into it somehow. And then there's that uncle of hers. Just name him, won't put him in jail. Well, there's a lot of temptation when you have eight million to manage for a young girl. Think of what you could do if it all became yours. You can't arrest a guy because he's dough hungry. You know, Patchy, a few months ago, Lydia used to run around occasionally with Two Spot. He had a little bowling alley out near her home, and she used to go there. So she needed exercise. Then suddenly, Two Spot sells the little place and moves downtown to this super layout of his. Where do you think he got the money? You just said they ran around together. Well, it could be that, but what if it's something else? Is that all you got to work with? Well, don't be abrupt. New bowling alley has a guy called Sackhead as manager. Well, good for him, and goodbye. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Sackhead used to be a pin boy in the old bowling alley. When he was sober enough to stand up, that is. Now he's manager. There must be a reason. Yeah, that's better. Let's go see Sackhead. When we reached the two-spot alleys, the place was almost deserted. It was too late for the earnest bowlers and too early for the drunks. When I asked the bartender for the manager, he began to gulp air and turn white. I knew I couldn't get anything from him, so I looked around the place till I saw the door marked office. I started that way, but it was a short trip. The bouncer dropped his cigar on the floor and cut across my path fast. Where are you going, bud? I don't need any help. It's private. You can't go in there. I just want to talk to Sackhead. Look that up in your rule book. He don't want to talk. He's out to lunch anyway. Let me find out these things myself. Nobody goes in there, understand? Everybody's throwing up stop signs tonight. <laughs> I can't win all the time.
Let's get out of here, Jocko. What's all the hurry? I've got to finish my drink. Come on, now. Oh, not even one for the road. Hold on, Mo back. It's bad for your heart. Ah, you're bad for me all over, Hellman. I thought I told you to stay in Palo Alto. While you two argue, I'll just go back and finish my drink. Stay here, Madigan. Oh. Now, what's the fast getaway all about? You can pick up your bets about two spot not being the one. Is he in there? Yeah. Another knife job. Somebody must think it's still Thanksgiving. Look, Patchy, I was sitting at the bar... Quiet, Madigan. It's going to make it tough on you, Novak. Not any tougher than that bouncer. He saw me go in. If you weren't so busy being a wise guy, I tipped you off the two-spot was a cold trail. Listen, Patrick. All right, Hellman, come out from behind that veil. You knew who did it all the time. Now, name him. What's out about that? Reynolds, of course. What do you got for proof? Some out of a dream book? We chucked up on those detectives who were killed. Reynolds hired them to work up a plan on Lydia. He wanted her jailed on suspicion of murder. That would give him control of the money. And, it and he killed it. two-spot because he beat him bowling. He hired two-spot and some of his boys to do the killing. If those dicks began to turn up dead, we could get Lydia on circumstantial evidence. It's too bad you two didn't wait a while to be born. They're making a better grade of cement now. Your brain... It has up pretty good, Jocko. If the killings were only on circumstantial evidence, Lydia wouldn't get the chair. They'd probably give her 20 years, and Uncle could keep up with the family funds. I'm going out now to pick up Reynolds. I'd like to see either of you try and come along. Well, what'll it be, Jocko? A champagne highball. Uh, look, just because I'm buying... Uh, guess who I saw when uh, you were in Two Spots' office? A bottle of scotch. Yes, and uh, no, I also saw Lydia. Lydia? She ran out the side door. Uh, it could mean anything. She's crazy, you know. I could see it in her eyes. Right then, she was crazy. You think she did it? Oh, I hate to break up your and Hellman's dream... but a doctor's supposed to know insanity when he sees it. Also, there was blood on her hand... A doctor's supposed to be able to identify that, too, if he's had the but proper... But you can't be training. crazy. I was talking to her. Oh, it could come and go. Besides, she's probably at the stage where drugs can still keep her calm down. I'll bet that's what Two-Spot had on her. She worked off the drug's effect while bowling, and something happened that Two-Spot witnessed. Maybe she killed a pin boy. That would fit Sackhead seeing it, too. Ah, then she did all the killing. Sure, and Two-Spot was covering for her to keep the money coming in. <laughs> you can't blackmail an insane asylum, you Come know. Come on, we better warn Hellman. Warn Hellman? If we do that, the killer might get away. Come on, Jocko. If Hellman gets killed, they might replace him with a cop with brains. <laughs> grabbed a taxi. Ten dollars worth of persuasion made him forget the color of some of the stoplights and we were out there in no time at all. Even before we were out of the cab, I knew it was too late. I could see the guest house lit up in its own flames. The trees around it looked like black skeletons dangling in a firelight. We started running across the lawn, but Reynolds cut us off. It's no good, Novak. There's nothing we can do. Is it Lydia? Yes. We tried to get in, but she's barricaded herself in an inner room. The heat drove us away. It's a hard way to die. I'm sorry I had to lie about the butler's death, put you on the spot like that. I knew she killed him. I was hoping I could get her in an asylum. She had a rough shuffle. With all that dough, all she could buy was a black ace. If you read the papers about it, all you'd have learned was that Lydia died in a fire. And the uncle saw to that. I don't know how he did it, but he managed. Of course, I kept quiet. I kept a thousand bucks worth of quiet. Reynolds gave me that to forget to talk. Added to what was left over from the thousand two spot gave me. It made a nice little bundle. And just my luck. Bay Meadows closed yesterday. <laughs> Heard on tonight's presentation were Ben Morris as Novak, John Galbraith as Inspector Hellman, Jack Lewis as Jocko, and Mary Milford as Lydia. With Herb Ellis, Tal Avery, Edwin McDonald, and Henry Left. Special music by Otto Clare. Listen again next week when over most of these same ABC stations, the American Broadcasting Company will present Pat Novak. For hire, this is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.